Well, cross country season is just around the corner. And I think a good share of South Dakota is fired up to see this young man, Simeon Birnbaum from Rapid City Stevens, uh, who will finally be a senior. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, no, thank you for having me on. Simeon, it was, uh, it was such a spectacular year for you last year, just all the way around. Um, and it even started out way back in the cross country season uh, last fall, both with you winning an individual title and I believe Stevens a, a team title there. Um, Take me back to that moment, uh, you know, the, doing real well at the state cross country meet and maybe the few weeks after that. Yeah, no, it was um, definitely an exciting weekend. Um, we had a great team last year, a bunch of seniors. Um, so we were just running well that whole year and really didn't have to do anything different for, for state. We just got in there, um, ran how we knew we could and came away with the win. Um, I, I would say that I came in definitely with confidence in that race, and I think it showed. Um, I was able to to just walk away down the home stretch and hope and do the same this year, but a, a different challenge will be getting the team there. One of the uh, things I wanted to ask you about, you, you had such a long season. You were in Washington and then uh, Eugene, Oregon, and such. Um, what, what kind of time off did you take, and, and what did you do during a, a little bit of a relaxation period, if you will? Yeah, so after Nike Nationals, um, we went out to the coast for a bit, um, kind of turned it into a family vacation. So we spent like two or three days um, out on the Oregon coast. And in total, I took about two weeks off of absolutely nothing, no running, um, no cross training, just, just kind of hanging out and enjoying the summer. Um, then I was really raring to go and get back into it once my time was up so it was definitely a, a fun break and it's what you need tell me a little bit about going under the four minute barrier in in washington uh, first of all I, I followed you through arcadia you know and all through the season here in south dakota um what were your thoughts kind of going into that race uh did you feel like four minutes was possible you had the lowest seated time uh, among all these guys what was your thought process going in there yeah, I mean, I knew no one was looking at me. Um, probably no one at the meet knew me. No one knew my name, um, which is totally fine. I like the underdog mentality. So, yeah, I came in with the goal to break four. Um, I knew it was it was possible, even though many people probably didn't believe that it was possible um, being my seed time and stuff. But um, the biggest goal was just to win the race. And so I got in there. I took care of that and just four sub four kind of came with it. I wasn't thinking about time. I was just thinking about winning. And um, obviously it helps when you're racing guys that are really, really fast. One of the things um, I wanted to ask you about was the medley relay in. Or, well, first of all, let me backtrack. For those of us mere mortals, uh, what is it like stepping on the track in Eugene, Oregon, where so many wonderful things have happened? Uh, can you maybe describe the ambience? What's that like? Yeah, it was definitely cool. Um, their new facility is, it's, it's amazing. Like I've definitely never been in or ran in a facility like that, just from the stadium to, I mean, all the other facilities and uh, the track, it's, it's pretty sweet to be on a track like that surrounded. I mean, full 360 around the track, block the wind and just make you feel in the zone and fast. I mean, that's, two most important things when you're racing so see man you you did a lot of things last year a lot of things um one of the things was winning the national medley relay title uh at eugene oregon i think you split like 149 five in that race um how much did it mean to to like share something with other teammates like a a national title at that stage with teammates of yours yeah um it was definitely a different experience it was obviously a lot more exciting um just like feeding off of each other's energy and seeing the joy in your teammates that makes that makes it all a lot more sweet so um yeah after the after my mile I had about a day rest and then I was going into the medley so within that day um I was basically doing everything I could to recover I think I probably took like two ice baths was rolling out right early and you know just doing everything I could because I really wanted that team title. Um, and I knew my other teammates, it was the only race they're out here for. So they, they were all in. So I needed to be all in as well. So I tried my best to um, get as fresh as I could. And 
yeah, I mean, it was a really special moment. I'm, uh, I'm going to take you just to the start of the anchor carry. And uh, this is actually the first leg there. You made up a big deficit on the guy that was in front of you. Um, you're going like crazy. How, how good did you feel that day running in the 149.5? Yeah, I didn't feel good at all. I felt awful. Um, <laughs> I really, it was really a tough race. Um, yeah, so I think the guy in front of me ended up splitting like 154 by, I mean, that's by all means, that's that's a good time. Um, so I got the baton and I knew it was a pretty big gap and I knew I didn't have to make it all up in the first lap, but of course I, I decided to. I went out in like 51.5, which if you know anything about 800s, that's not a fun way to race. Um, so that second lap, I was flooded with lactate and was just holding on for dear life. And yeah, I got it done, but I was, I was really, really hurting for a while after that race. See, man, I've got the, the picture up of the race from uh, Washington where you broke the four minute uh, barrier coming into the final stretch there. Uh, kind of what were you thinking? There's a couple guys around you. You had to work your way back up from the pack. What, what's going through your mind here as you enter the home stretch? Yeah, with about 200 to go, I knew I was going to win. Um, I was looking and there, only had a couple meters on me and I felt really good. Um, I know it's how the pace we're running. I knew we were around four minute pace and I was just, if you like watch back, you can see with about 150 go on the turn, I kind of try to swing out and then Bergen um, goes out in the lane too. And I just decide not to, not to go and just wait till the, the straightaway. So I don't end up running a whole bunch of extra meters, but yeah, at that point, I pretty much knew um, I was going to win unless someone could match my kick, which I was pretty confident no one else could do. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you maybe just briefly about goals for this season. Um, it, it feels like – actually, let me backtrack on that a second. There, there was somebody interviewed you after the Brooks PR race in Seattle, and in the middle of that interview, you, you talked about South Dakota – uh, kids not necessarily having a, a chance to compete at this level. Um, do you feel like that's something you wear South Dakota proudly on your neck and in terms of the other cross country runners that might not quite be able to do what you do? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, I mean, what's my fastest mile time in South Dakota? What, like four fifteen from state? Like, yeah, I mean, all my, all my PRs are out of state other than my two mile, which I never really raced out of state. It's just, once you get on a fast track at sea level with good competition, like these guys have every single weekend, you're going to run like way faster than you do in South Dakota. Um, so yeah, when it comes like to, especially runners who have to train the conditions and race outdoors, when it comes to college recruiting and um, just running being such a black and white sport, like you run this time, you get this. Um, right. Which isn't really fair um, to kids in South Dakota. So I would say, yeah, I mean, if, if, if I can represent that, if I can represent a kid who is a good South Dakota runner, I'm not running crazy fast times in South Dakota. And it shows that when I get out of state, I perform at a really high level and I'm beating these guys who are ranked way above me just because I have this opportunity. Um, yeah, I'm definitely a proud South Dakota athlete and I, I love to represent that. So could you tell us maybe briefly about uh, maybe one or two of your goals this year? I, I figure you've got a lot of them with uh, maybe Nike cross country, uh, you know, in there somewhere, but I, I'm guessing you got a bunch and m would you mind sharing just a couple with us? Yeah. Um, I would, I'd like to win a national meet, um, whether it's East Bay or NXN, it's definitely a lofty goal, especially for me. Um, not really focusing entirely on cross country. That's not my, that's, it's not my cup of tea. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a speedier guy, like 800s and miles. But, um, yeah, I mean, realistic or not, I'm not going to settle for less. It's, that's what I, it's what I, I mean, I can't even decide. My brain has already decided that's what I want to do. So saying top five, like if I write down top five finish at a national meet, I'm not truly going to be going for that. I mean, I know what I want, and so I'm going to go for that. How did the four minute mile change your life? Um, and I, I'm kind of wondering if the mailman started coming twice or three times a day to, to bring recruiting letters, like what, what did going under four minutes, how'd that change your life as a runner and a uh, prospective student athlete? Yeah, no, it definitely gave me a whole bunch of opportunities. I, I didn't have before. That's for sure. Um, 
yeah, I mean, all of a sudden colleges that I reached out to finally checked their email and got back to me, you know, just stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really blessed to have the opportunities I have just um, college wise and um, like the opportunities I'll have this year to run in races and um, just finally have the times to do the races I want to do. Um, now that I've proven myself, I mean, that's really hard. You have to do that when you're from South Dakota and then you get into the races once you have the times. So right. um, I'm excited for those opportunities and I'm really grateful for this breakout to happen my junior year. So my college decision can be um, what I want it to be. Well, Simeon, I'm going to let you go. Um, South Dakota will be watching this year. I think there are so many people you transformed a sport that doesn't get a lot of attention into something that was really exciting. That doesn't happen often. So I wanted to say good luck to you. We'll be watching and uh, have a great senior year. Yeah, for sure. And I'll thank you for your time.